there is one truth versus think of it like this. There is one truth that must be true versus no, 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 just think of it like this. A hero delivers us from the darkness. The darkness that is so pervasive in many religions and I could single them out one at a time but it is better that I give you a scale to use. The reason why Jesus called the Canaanites dogs was because of their location and their cult center relative to Egypt and Israel and Babylon. Min was the patron of chemists and also the trade routes going through Canaan. So they were always the thorn in, e in righteous Egyptian sides, in the spirit warrior side. The hero is an idea in psychology and science in our society, when actually it is the truth. It is an idea that is twisted. Think of it like this. Let's make it so anyone can be a hero. No. The hero is someone with a heroic spirit that does things for a reason that is truly selfless with God as his main concern. If in the process he happens to elevate himself, well, so what? Is Jesus your hero? Does that not elevate him? Does his teachings not elevate him? So when we look at this thing and we talk about, uh, let me start off with procreation versus concreation or concrete. A witch deals in chemistry and alchemy, illusion, which includes a concrete jungle, which is perhaps the greatest manifestation of illusion. So concreation versus procreation and how that relates to prophets uh, and, and so on. There are many obstacles in people's lives, money, oppression, racial obstacles, etc. Some people think slowly and long term with an emphasis on keeping their tribe, their family, their race above other people in an underhanded manner, inevitably. How do you keep one race above the rest in a dynamic society if you do not use underhanded techniques. By default, you are dooming your race to ill-gotten gains and the spirit of underhandedness and divisiveness and devious activities. So when we look at this thing, right, they are casting a doubt, casting doubt on the truth when they cast their spell and do their illusion. The turning point in the Bible is the Garden of Eden when women sought to overstep their bounds and men followed because they followed the women. This is why women need to throw themselves at me and fall in line. Now listen very carefully. I'll give you everything I have if you can prove my logic faulty, definitively. So let's, let's start with name one female hero in myth, in popular culture, right? It should be easy. In a feminist society where 40% of women are self-proclaimed feminists, where a feminist almost became the president, it should be very simple for us to immediately think of a woman in myth or in reality that is truly embodying what it means to be a hero. Like, say, Narmer, Nimrod, Jesus, um, Joshua, etc. You know, in Muslim, in Islam, Muhammad. You know, the Buddha and Buddhism and Hinduism and so on. Where are they? Where are they in our society? If our society is so advanced and so great, where are the women who are truly heroes? They don't exist. But the villains do. Margaret Sanger comes to mind. Bloody Mary comes to mind. Even in Egyptian mythology, look at Isis. Isis, is she a hero? No, because of her feminine nature, she was unable to defeat Set herself, and her son was the hero, Horus, or Haru, which means face the truth, face your enemy, face us, Horus. Haru, the arrow, the hair in you, the hair O. Oh, there's one greatest embodiment, and you need to fall in line with the divine order to expel the darkness, or you will not succeed. There is no defeating evil without falling in line with the divine order. 
because to defy the divine order is evil. To steal from somebody is evil. So if you deny the hero his rightful place as the main leader of society as a result of your movement, are you not evil? Of course you are. To steal candy from a baby is wrong. How much more wrong than stealing the spiritual leader's rightful place from him? In the name of anything, contrary is evil. Trying to play God and push God out of the way is evil. Pushing God's representative out of the way and pretending he's not correct is evil. There is no having a righteous movement without falling in line to Chukwu Emeka or whoever the closest man to God is at the moment. It is impossible. It can't be done. Let's think about Wonder Woman. Is she a hero? She doesn't. What myth is she based on? If she's based on a myth, how come we don't know it? She's super hooker. I'm sure the New World Order is a fucking afraid of super materialistic hooker saving the day. You know, let's all invest in the idea that some super hooker comes, uses her years and years of strip pull activity and sleeping with politicians to amass a fortune to save us all. You know, let's wait for that. Let's pray for that. It's stupid, right? It's fucking dumb. It's fucking retarded. Every race has reasons why people don't believe them. Oh, the white savior is going to save us. Yeah, like we believe that. We know, you know, you can imagine why we're all skeptical of that. You know, uh, uh, Donald Trump is our hero. Obviously, we're all skeptical of that. The black man, oh, he's a con artist. He's a gangster. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a New World Order puppet. He's another Obama. We're all skeptical. We're all skeptical. The Asian, oh, he's a, he's a martial arts movie star. He's going to save us. We're all skeptical. We're all skeptical of the Hispanic, of the Islander, of everyone. We're not impressed by any race. We're skeptical of all of them. Their masculine qualities have trouble breaking through to save us. We're skeptical of the mulatto. Oh, uh, we're worried about house niggas and you're half white. We're skeptical of everyone. Of course, Obama was a mulatto. Was he a hero? No. So I covered ISIS. Okay, so what does it take to be a hero? Mind, body, soul, and spirit. The mortar that allows us to stick together. It's not the hero. It is the woman. So the woman has an important part in choosing the hero and men in following the pussy, which is part of the reason, the main reason they get money to buy nice things to attract beautiful women. What is more comfortable than a beautiful wife? Would you rather have the nice house or the supermodel wife or your true love? Would you rather have a Lamborghini or your true love? And if you pick the Lamborghini, you're a fucking idiot. All right. So mind, body, soul, and spirit is what it takes. Women don't have the mind. They don't have the mental strength. They break down like little girls. Oh, just stop. Just stop. With all due respect. Even the toughest of them will break down. And even if they didn't, does that make them a man who rises like the masculine sun to the occasion. Even the expression rise to the occasion implies the spirit of the sun, the core of the sun, the masculine energy of the sun. The male body, the male presence, the spiritual presence of a man to be taken seriously. Why do you think feminists quite often mimic men? Because they're trying to play the part of what it takes to be a hero, to man up. The soul, the soul of the sun. The soul even means sun, I believe, in Spanish, right? Soul, you know, the soul of the sun. Or at least there's a beer that's called soul with the sun in it, I believe, you know. So yeah, I'll have to look that up. The spirit, the spirit of God. Tell Sophia that knowledge is not enough. Take that bitch outside and shoot her in the head. We don't need her. We need heart. We need the heart of the most masculine energy on this planet. And you're looking at him. Everything else is evil. If we don't follow God, if we don't follow righteousness in its pure form, you're evil. If your movement doesn't direct people to me, it is evil. Why wouldn't you want people to go to where the good is? I'm going to take you to a, a nice land. We don't need to go to the promised land, people. A nice land is good enough. A nice sunny beach is good enough for me. I don't need the promised land, right? That's evil. That's evil. 
an, an okay leader who has good intentions is good enough. We don't need the son of man. That's evil. All right, so what is the center of society? It tends to be some monument. You know, Washington, D.C., you know, we, we are building a kind of materialistic center, like a temple that is focused on the beautiful inner chamber and not the spirit of God most embodied in a man. Jesus said, I will rebuild the temple in three days. Why did he build a physical temple? Why did he focus on his flesh? Because it is not the flesh that makes the man impure. It is the spirit. We are in a situation which is, which is similar to a father that wants his child to come home. But first he needs to admit you to admit to yourself that you were wrong and he was right. In this, in this instance, he is right. And that you've learned the hard way. That no one can truly possess the tree of knowledge of good and evil. No one can possess this chemistry thing masterfully. No one can direct humanity using chemistry, science, and psychology, and psychology masterfully. There's only one master and he is God. And his spirit is embodied most in one man. And we need to follow that man and listen to him. And women need to 